know, the weather outside isn't uh, all that great right now, but I want to take a time to catch up with you. Hi, I'm Pastor John from Millerville Community Church, and this is our weekly vlog. Although last week I didn't get one, and I apologize for that. But this week I want to talk about our future and uh, things we've already been talking about and a brand new idea that has come to light. So we've dialogue, which is what I hope we will do on MCC Briefing. We've been talking about ideas and ways we can tackle the challenges of our day. And uh, at the end of this video, I want to share with you a great idea that's being talked about. We'd love to hear from you and see what you think about a way of helping our children and to get a good education while having parental involvement. But this week, it's been Heritage Week. Last Monday, I hope you celebrated your heritage with your family, your heritage as a Canadian and as a Christian, for we have all benefited from our nation being grounded on a, a Christian culture in so many ways. Recently, Sandra and I, in order to celebrate Heritage Day, went out to Heritage Park in Calgary, Alberta, right off the Glen Martin uh, Reservoir. Uh, one of our favorite places. We love going there. And on the Heritage uh, Weekend, we were there celebrating our past. And uh, they've recreated it. They've brought it all back together. And one of the things you'll see is finding the old uh, Millerville Ranchers Hall at Heritage Village in Calgary. So that was our day at Heritage Park. We really had a great time exploring the old buildings, see how life used to be many, many years ago. Where church was at the center of town. It was school and church were not separate things. The Lord's Prayer and the study of the Bible was happening at school, oftentimes in the very same building where worship took place. But over the years, we gave up that dynamic and that relationship with society, and schools went off on their own. They became uh, public schools, and the government took them over. We still hung on for a lot of years in teaching the Lord's Prayer and the Bible in schools, and eventually we went secular. And secular means that without God. So there was no mention of God, there was no use of the Ten Commandments. And somehow the church made peace with that and saying, well, as long as it's not anti-God, but you can't remove God without becoming something else. And what came in was ideology. And that's what we have today. Ideology is the idea is that you replace something with God, you replace that with something else. We saw in Russia that communism replaced God with the, common, common, the Communist Manifesto, which created ideologues, and they had a certain belief in a system, a way of thinking that was not godly. And as a result, their entire system collapsed under it. We've got the same thing happening today. We have a system developing where ideologues, people who are woke or have a anti-God, anti-creation, pro-science is the new religion, and we've got to follow the science rather than follow God. And it's not just general debate of science. We are doing the science. There's only one version of science that is allowed. And there's no more discussion about that. And so well, now we're having the collapse of everything as a result. It's being reported right now that uh, if you want to get a degree as a surgeon or if you want to be a psychologist or do just about anything, that you have to sign up uh, off of woke ideology in order to get that degree. Our education is not what it was. And I believe that's because we've left God behind. So what do we do? Where do we go from here? Well, the answer seems to be that the church needs to get back involved in education. And we need to bring in God and good, solid education in together at the same time. But how do we do that in our environment in Canada when uh, there is definitely a war on Christianity taking place? Well, our new idea is this, and we want to hear from you on that. 
We want to hear your comments, do the research, and find out more about it, and maybe give us advice and suggestions of how we can possibly do this. But after talking to several parents and concerned individuals who are educators in the song, a new concept has developed. It's just a modification of a current one that's out there. We don't want to start another Christian school that's really expensive because it's a private school. We want to stay with homeschooling where there is a lot of parental involvement. But it is just too much for a lot of parents to homeschool their children on their own. What we have seen and what has taken place is we have grouping of parents come together and they homeschool together in the region they are. And it's voluntary and they form temporary groups and they last for a little while and then they dissolve. What we're thinking is we can form a Christian school co-op. A co-op, a cooperative of homeschoolers who come together, use a common facility, a large facility like an unused church during the week, and they teach their kids together at the co-op. And like in any co-op, you pay your dues, and your dues goes towards administration costs. And as more people join the co-op, People volunteer, the parents volunteer to teach their children certain subjects. And you might have a parent that's really good at math, might have a parent that's really good at English, another one that's really good at history and so on. And that rather than a parent teaching all the subjects, you have a skilled parent teaching a subject that they're prepared for and so on. If I'm a parent, I'm going to have to teach a math class to my kids of three well, it's not that much more to have a group of 10, 15, or 20 kids and I only have to teach it once again to them like I would have before. But then that might be all I teach because another parent will teach another class in the area of their expertise. And by joining a co-op and paying a membership dues, not a scholarship, not a tuition, but membership dues to the co-op, the co-op can afford to hire an administrator who works out schedules, helps train teachers, get resources to make sure that they're in compliance with the government in the education of those children. So the parents are still doing the teaching, but they hire an administrator who is a trained educator, who has a teaching degree, and makes sure everything stays on track. And that administrator oversees the co-op, works for the co-op, and is part of that. Costs are kept low by Hiring a just one administrator, the teachers do the teaching, and a church organization that forms the co-op on Christian principles, ideals, and beliefs, like God is the creator of the universe, that there is a Jesus who saves us from our sins, and that uh, the exploration of math and science and the cosmos is a way of seeing the beauty of God and seeing the order that he had created. When we base it on those kind of principles, let that truck go by. When we base it on those kinds of principles, we discover that we can build a great curriculum. And based on that is not propaganda. We still have to teach the government's uh, agenda for curriculum. But what a parent can do then, along with the cooperative value system, is come to the belief or the understanding that as we present the government's position or the world's position, we can also offer the alternative. A good part of classical education that I've been a part of and grew up in that was part of the Greek understanding of education is that you need to understand all the positions. Even the ones you don't dis you agree with, you still need to understand them, be able to argue them so that you know what the position is before you put forth your own position. So that's classical education. A co-op could easily handle that and still be in compliance with the government while keeping the costs very low because a building like this is dedicated to children and families coming together around the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what this would do at a much lower cost where we could provide the building for cleaning fees, electricity and water, that kind of stuff. 
and that could be a very viable option. Well, this is an idea. I'm not saying we're doing it. I'm not saying that it's possible. I'm saying, wouldn't it be cool if we could get homeschoolers together working towards a common goal on the foundation of Jesus Christ and maybe make the church at the center of the community again? What do you think? What's your opinion? I want to hear from you. If you leave a comment below in the section, or write us or let us know. I've already had people talk to me. I want to hear from you. Maybe you want to get in on this and research it and find out what's going on in this field. If anyone else is doing it, we would love you to do that. The more that we get involved, the more ideas we share, the more we brainstorm together, the more we can discover the way forward and God's answers to the challenges of today. This has been Pastor John from Millerville Community Church, encouraging you as always to keep the faith and to share it too. Come escape the city. Come to God's country. Come to God's people. Come to God's Word. Welcome to Millerville Community Church. We're just a short drive away.